Hey everybody, welcome back. New episode of Entropia Content. Today, what do we got going on? Looks like I already got some auction bids. Woohoo! I don't think anyone bought anything because my pet value is still at zero, but or not zero, what I left it at. But I'll check on the auction terminal and check. Well, I guess I can check up here too. Let's do that first. Now, I hope everyone's doing well. Got some really cool comments. People said they wanted to add me as friends in the game. So maybe that's what some of these messages are. Oh yeah, here it is. Allow Chance Iron Fist. How do you say that last word? Bard? To add you as your friend? Yeah, I'll allow it. Land area, got that. Ooh, one of my items sold at FOMA. Holy crap, it sold for 46 ped. Holy, thanks so much. Who bought it, does it say? Uh, buyer, AW Boob Rojax. So thanks a lot, Boob. I appreciate it. Now, Boobs have always been my favorite. Now, even more so. <laughs> right, so we got an existing bid on the bonding liquid. Looks like first Kenji forever placed a bid. Right, thanks, Kenji. So far, you've got a really good deal on it. I hope you have good luck on it. But to be honest, I also want someone to buy it out. So if anyone can prevent Kenji from getting a really good deal, you can help me. <laughs> No, but it's okay if Kenji gets it for 33. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, well, it would kind of suck. Man, I'd lose 60 some pet, or no, 30 pet. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. Right, so the Lulo Stone, no bids yet. Glam Rock, no bids yet. Just the Postal Service notification. Right, so I guess I should clear up. Maybe let's do the weight loss thing quick because I can finish that one quick. And then we'll get into the other information I got about Next Island. There has been some updates from Next Island, so I'll cover that as well. All right. Oh, yeah, and then the one guy I was arguing with a little bit in the Entropia group. Sorry, it got a little bit heated. But no, he was saying that I don't care about the show because I'm not doing the timestamps. I was just trying to explain to him. It's like, man, I record two shows and I got a pretty busy life other than doing this. So I really don't have time to rewatch all the shows and then timestamp it because that would be over double the amount of time. So if it didn't take me over double the amount of time, I would because then it would be pushing me like four to six hours work a day. I'm already at like the two to three hour mark. So yeah, that's why I'm not doing it. Not because I don't care about the show. And then he was also saying the show is really boring. And I was actually kind of agreeing with that to a certain degree because I noticed I haven't been doing too much big action in Tropia lately. So I'm trying to gear up to the more exciting stuff. I got that big episode and coming up with the Crafting Mania on my birthday, December 2nd. If anyone wants to come see me do it live in person, I'll probably be crafting it right here at this terminal. So if anyone wants to meet here December 2nd, I'm not sure what time I'll be doing it because my family might be doing birthday stuff. Well, I doubt it. It's probably just going to be my roommate, my uncle, because no one else can even come over. That's normally how my birthday is every year anyways because it's in December and no one likes to do stuff in the winter in Canada much. We all just social isolate anyways usually. <laughs> so I kind of wish my birthday was in the summer some years but what can you do? Alright so yeah, let's check to see what the ped flow balance is. Whoops. Ancient Greece and Crystal Palace Station haven't really been going up too much or maybe they have and I haven't been tracking it very well. Holy shit, my FOMA shop now is totaled with those last few sales. has pumped it up to over 100 ped. So I can pull out 100 ped any time now. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not actually too disappointed if I fail the Crafting Mania reward print by getting zero. Oh, fuck. But if it, that happens, at least it won't be too down the dumps because, man, you guys are helping with the shop sales and everything. I really appreciate it. That last sale kicked ass. All right, uh... Yeah, let's do the, the diet thing before I continue any quicker, or finish any quicker. Right, so let's check it out. What are we at today? We made it to 205.6. And I was really happy about that, but then I realized that this 0 0.06 body fat is not very much. Mainly, I, I lost muscle. I'm not sure exactly why I've been losing muscle so fast this week. I think I, I cut my workout down to a quarter and I thought I could maintain it, but it looks like I'll have to put it back up to at least half in order to maintain it. 
Now I was thinking eating less, I'd work out a little bit less so that it wouldn't be as bad with like the shakes or fucking nausea feelings. But yeah, apparently I'm not working out enough. So I'll have to push that up a bit. Yeah, so let's check out the trends. At least for the weight, it's starting to go in the right direction there. It was a little bit of a roller coaster at the beginning. But I have kept my calorie intake at around 2,000, so I should be going down at least a pound or two a day. 2,000 calories doesn't sound like hardly anything enough to like even be healthy, but I'm making sure to eat like really nutrient-rich foods like milk. Milk is like, even a glass of milk is almost all the nutrients you need for a day. Well, to maintain, not to keep building, I don't think. Yeah, so body fat, I guess body fat did go down a fair bit. But here was the one I was worried about. Muscle did go down. So I got to try to get that back up. You know, when it goes down, getting it back up is the key. <laughs> All right, give my mind out of the gutter. Let's get back to Entropia. Jeez. <laughs> no, sorry, guys. I swear when the pandemic comes over, I won't be such a perv. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> Now yesterday I almost got a chance to meet a smoking hot babe at the disc golf course. She was playing alone. We both showed up at the tee at the same time. I was like, fuck, I've been having the sniffles the past couple days and I can't tell if it's just the cold weather or I'm actually getting sick. So I'm like, fuck it, I didn't ask her to play or, or join a game together. I was thinking, geez, if it wasn't for the pandemic, I definitely would ask to play a game with her. She probably would have said no anyways, but who knows. At least I would have had a chance. Not that I'm looking to like make out with random babes or something, but wouldn't it hurt to like boost my spirits to actually socialize with women for a change? I noticed like the whole injury with the concussion, I started my socialize, social isolation back in, what was it, August of 2018. So what is it now? We're 20. Yeah, so it's been over two years that I've been social isolating. No, technically, it was weird how it worked out. I didn't need to social isolate anymore from my concussion symptoms ending at around, what was it? I think it was January or February. So it was like January and February, I was like, all right, back to socializing again. And then the fucking pandemic hit. <laughs> so I was like, dear God, more social isolation? You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> yeah, so if you're wondering how bad social isolation gets, wait till you're at like the two or three year mark. It's fucking brutal. <laughs> Now, if anyone's wondering, you don't really have to social isolate for a concussion, but it does make it a lot easier in most cases. Well, in my case specifically, I was getting really bad migraines, dizziness, fucking irritability, anytime anyone even spoke. So I was like, I couldn't be around anyone who would speak. So that was kind of like, all right, I need to social isolate. I don't know what it was. It's like all external stimuli. Like I couldn't even ride the bus or the train. If I looked out the window, too many moving objects would kids kick in the symptoms too. So I was like, holy fuck, it's like, there was a lot of shit I couldn't do for like two years. Well, I could do it, but it was like torture. So I try not to. Right, so what was the good news in Entropia? Oh yeah, that fucking Next Island shit. So yeah, let's stand here for a second, and I'll just go get it. Alright, we're back. And I got it open, and what I did is I opened up the, the Facebook Next Island page. I'll just run some of these zombies to the turret and then I'll open it there. See, that's what I was telling someone yesterday. Yeah, when I posted that argument episode. Some people are like, oh yeah, you're arguing with him. That guy was such a jackass. But technically, I shouldn't really even say that because I've run into the same cases where I was bitching at people about stealing my mobs when I was trying to do the AI mission. Oh yeah, and that was another comment someone was putting in the Facebook that they were surprised that on Rocktropia you, you tend to get yelled at more than on any other planet like people that are really upset and tell you off and I was thinking that's the socialism part of Rocktropia I never even realized it, well I guess I kinda did because normally when you start having too much free shit and all this socialism that's what happens is people start freaking out and fighting each other for it oh there's some AI hopefully I'm not stealing someone's AI, if I am sorry I'm hoping that everyone who was hunting this AI has already left. And I'm just taking the extra ones. Holy shit. Oh, I was going to say it was good loot, but no, it wasn't. 
Oh shit, there is another green dot there. Hopefully I didn't steal them. Yeah, so that's what I was going to say. As much as I like to bitch at that guy about bitching, it was like I've caught myself doing the same thing. So don't give that guy too hard of a time. <laughs> now, and that's the thing with Rocktropia. It's like a lot of these things have all this free stuff that we can make a lot of pet and stuff, but it requires competing with other players to get it. Sort of like when you live in a socialist country, sure, everything's free, but then you got to wait in fucking hours or even weeks in line because you're against everyone else going for the free shit. You can't just buy it. You have to wait and compete for free stuff. So that's, I think, where a lot of the conflict comes in at Rocktropia. Like, say, this AI mission. People start yelling when people take their AI mobs because they had to kill zombies to get them. And then they're like, holy fuck, I killed all these zombies and you took the reward, you jackass. Yeah, so I should stop taking them as I'm saying this. Is that I should ask, is anyone hunting the AI? <laughs> yeah, so that's one way you can maybe avoid the conflict. Ask before you start taking. Oh, I should ask, is anyone hunting zombies for AI? Because sometimes some people just be killing zombies for the hell of it. And I remember one time I asked a guy that, I'm like, are you killing zombies for the hell of it? And he said, yeah. So then I started collecting the AI. He's like, what are you doing taking the AI? And I'm like, well, I thought you said you were just collecting the zombies for the hell of it. He's like, no, he was being sarcastic. He actually was going for the AI. I was like, well, fuck. How was I supposed to know you were sarcastic, right? <laughs> Oh, looks like there's a couple people down there. Yeah, so they're probably hunting. I'll get out of here and not take any more AI. Sorry, guys. I didn't realize you were hunting there. If anyone's watching the show <laughs> that happened to be doing it. No, and today I'm not going to fuck around more with this shit. Oh, yeah, that's what I said I was going to do. And then I forgot. I got to give you guys the Next Island updates. All right, so first thing I did is I went to the Facebook Next Island page. And I opened it and noticed on October 2nd that they had a bit of an update on the news. And I was hoping that they were going to tell us the Sky Ripper is available. I could go and finish the crafting mission and get some. But that's not what the update was. So I'll read you what the update is. And I don't even need to show it to you guys because we're running on the screen anyway. So it should be okay. All right. It says, hello, Next Islanders. We are very, oh, we thank you very much for your patience concerning the University of Riverside t-shirts. If anyone hasn't heard... I don't know, did I do an episode on the Riverside shirts? Maybe I'll make that this episode, if I haven't already. So anyways, the Riverside, yeah, this will be the Riverside t-shirt episode. It says, starting Saturday, October 2nd, we will begin the process of reaching out to players and delivering their shirts. This will be done in an official, did I run past some fruit there? I thought I saw fruit for a second. It's like, did I see fruit in the corner of my eye? Or am I just going by the gay bar? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I shouldn't make mean gay jokes. My youngest brother is gay. He always tells me it's okay to make gay jokes as long as they're funny and try not to be mean about it. And he said actually a lot of gay jokes he finds funny too. <laughs> yeah. No, that's pretty cool. My boyfriend's, uh, or my brother's boyfriend is uh, from China, so I get to learn a lot about China. It's pretty cool. Man, when they go on vacations to China, he takes my brother to some like these tourist areas that like normally are, that are only usually open to Chinese people. So my brother got all these pictures back from China. He, fuck, man, some of the most amazing shit I've ever seen. Chinese culture is fucking amazing. The only thing I worry about is a little bit that they're communist government's taken some shit too far but other than that it seems like really good and then even in defense of the communist government it's like when you look at how well their government is maintaining their country as much as we make fun of it they're actually doing things better than we are in a lot of cases like he says like uh, my brother's boyfriend when he goes back to china it's like normally when he goes there he goes because like He'll have to either go to the dentist or he'll have to get some surgery done. He's like, when he goes back to China, he can not only go to China and get it done cheaper, but it'll be so cheaper that it'll even cover his plane flight there and back. And he says the fucking medical care and dental care in China is fucking like top notch. He said when he came to Canada, he thought he was like in a third world country. 
when he saw how pathetic our medical system was. So yeah, the Chinese communist system, as strict and brutal as it is, it, it is kicking our ass in some regards. Especially how much land and stuff they've gathered. It's like, holy shit. They're managing to like help their people out big time. Now, it takes a little bit of mean shit to do, but man, like, I sometimes I worry that our government's giving away too much of our land. It's like we're already fighting the natives and the French people for it. It's like, do we really want another party to be fighting for it? <laughs> oh, well. All right, so yeah, let's finish the Riverside shit. Here, I'll bring it up on the screen so you guys can take a look. Now no zombies are after me. I'll increase the zoom a bit too so you guys can read it better. I know some players watch it on a cell phone, so... Fucking tiny text on a cell phone is probably not the best. Right, so it says, yeah, starting October 2nd, we'll begin process of reaching out to players, delivering the shirts. This will be done in official to player trade window, so bear with us. We will get to everyone in time. Yeah, sorry if I start speed talking. That's the one weird thing I noticed with cannabis. Once I quit, it's like all of a sudden I stop being hindered with my speech. So I fucking all of a sudden start talking like really fast. Even some of my friends and family will be like, hey man, slow down. You're talking way too fast. <laughs> Alright, the university will not be paying out the 50 ped reward to those particular qualified applicants who are able to fully complete the survey until they obtain enough participants to finish their experiment. So due to this, Next Island has decided to go ahead and cover the cost. It says we, as in Next Island, will reach out to and pay those qualified participants also starting Saturday, October 2nd. So please continue to have patience with us and get to everyone as fast as we can. And thank you all for participating. Well, I shared this in my society group and I tried doing it and the only thing I qualified for was winning the shirt and I still haven't got the shirt yet so I'll see if I can find it in here oh Instagram thing yeah I should check them on Instagram Ah, uh, here it is. So if anyone wanted the details more about this whole Riverside, what it even was. I don't know if you still can sign up. Maybe this means that the program's over, but I'll read it anyway. Next Island has partnered with a social and spatial cognition lab at the University of California, Riverside. And we will be sharing paid opportunities to be involved in scientific research with the Entropia community soon. So that's basically what they wanted is people to do surveys from Entropia about gaming. So but first we want to find out what other online games Entropians regularly play. And as a reward, Next Island will issue a unique shirt with the lab logo to each avatar that takes the time to participate in this initial poll. And I was thinking I was stupid because I think when I went and filled out the survey, I said that I didn't play any other video games. And then retrospect, I was thinking, shit, I play Fortnite occasionally in those other games, and that was part of the poll, and they were looking for questions about people that also play Fortnite. So I fucking filled it out wrong. I was like, shit, I should have put that I played Fortnite occasionally. Because then they said I only qualified for the shirt, but not the survey. Because they wanted to make sure that they were talking to people that played other games. So I don't play Fortnite very often. I think I just play it when I'm really bored of Entropia and boot up my PlayStation. I got it on that PS4. Pro, but yeah so that's if anyone was wondering what that was all about I think that's what it was so if you spend as much time or more in another online game as you spend in Entropia please respond to this quick one question poll on the next island forum oh it was fucking one question I got it wrong <laughs> all right so yeah Bonnie I think was helping out with that and I didn't get any information about what the shirts look like from Next Island or any of these things but it turned out that Bonnie had some information so I'll bring up Bonnie's page I hope she doesn't mind anyone sharing her Facebook on on a stream but I think this is just a Bonnie's page is just for Entropia so she probably has another one in real life I don't know now it's funny doesn't Bonnie look almost identical to her avatar <laughs> I say she did a good job creating it. Alright, so what else was there? Boss waves this weekend. 
live now. She had a post about the Riverside shirts. That's weird. Maybe it was on one of her other pages. Right, so one second, I'll, I'll just close this for a second while I make sure I don't open anything and no one should see from Facebook. Alright, I'm back. Yeah, and there we go. I managed to find it. I think what it was is Bonnie has only posted another post so far and she hasn't put it in her wall because it's still a relatively new nine hour post. So here's what the Riverside shirts look like. Man, is that a nice shirt or what? I'm uh, wondering what the guy's shirt looks like. Maybe it's the same. Probably smaller boobs for the guys. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, let's take a uh, Riverside shirt from Next Ellen for taking part in the research. I think it looks cool. Yeah, I think it looks cool too, so I'll give it a like. But yeah, and if anyone wanted to see some of the other Entropian streamers, I haven't watched this guy's show yet, but he seems very active, so I appreciate his work in Entropia, and if anyone wants to check it out, I'm sure he's doing a good job. Looks like he's one of those Uber players that is, like has a lot of good Hall of Fames you can watch on his channel. If you get bored of mine from sweating and stuff, that would probably be a good one to switch it up with. And Bonnie's too. She does a lot of crazy hunting. Hoping Raven Jade has some more content coming out soon. I haven't seen it in a while, but maybe it's because I missed her posts. I'll have to check into that. Yeah, and then Yoshi. Who else? Who do I all know from Entropia? Yeah, Yoshi's really cool. Yeah, Bonnie. Oh yeah, David's from Entropia. I thought he was one of my Freemason friends. Right, Joseph, James, Michael, oh, Avalon, that's his name. Avalon Eruptor. Adam, Angelica, Smoroble. Hey, I think this is the one guy that used to buy blueprints years and years ago at Twin. If he's watching the show or anyone knows him, is that the guy that used to buy Prince at Twin? I think his avatar was like a giant fat guy. I could be getting it wrong, but more than likely. <laughs> yeah, and so here's some other players. I won't go through them all. Let's get a little bit back to Entropia. Yeah, so I figure today, guys, what I'll do for my episode is I got to get ready to go to the next planet. I'm going to go to Next Island, see if I can pick up those shirts now, and then finish my crafting run and who knows maybe by the time I finish my crafting run they'll have the Sky Ripper thing going that'll be nice now I just wanted to clear it up too is despite me and that guy in case anyone didn't watch the whole episode we sort of made up we weren't arguing by the end of it and I was actually gonna send him a friend request and I forgot maybe I should try to do it now Who was he? Was he that guy? I can't remember. Yeah, hopefully he didn't get upset and quit the game. Hope I didn't give him too hard of a time. Well, anyways, looks like he's gone. Now, that's what happened to a friend of mine when he first started Entropia. He got like a global in his first day playing. He's like, this is amazing. He's going to deposit and try to get more globals. And then once he lost all of his deposit and he didn't get any more globals, he's like, fuck this, I'm just quitting the game. I'm like, oh man, it's like you shouldn't be chasing globals. That's one thing I try to encourage players in Tropia. If you're going to be chasing globals, it's going to be a hard game to play. If you're just going to be having fun with the occasional global chasing, it's more of a realistic plan. Unless you're fucking loaded and then it's like, alright, well you can just keep depositing like crazy. <laughs> Now I've realized, what is it? Today's episode's half an hour left to go. I'm trying to think how much really can I get done in a half an hour. I'm not gonna be able to fly all the way to next island. I'll have to pause it for that part. All right, so I'll just go and check the oil rigs and the motorhead keg rig quick and make sure there's nothing I can grab. And then I'll get ready to, to take off and we'll, we'll head out to the new planet. Now I'm pretty sure people are so bored of this that they wouldn't mind to see me do a crafting run so I'm kind of looking forward to a crafting run as well. You'll notice that once I do crafting it doesn't take long for me to get sick of crafting but after I take a break from crafting for a while then I'm start to jones for it again. 
Yeah, speaking of jonesing, my uh, Sober October has been going pretty well, but I kind of cheated in a way. It's like I ended up getting a really good buzz. <laughs> and not from doing drugs. <laughs> People are wondering, what the fuck? How did you get a buzz for not doing drugs? Well, it's because I've been doing the weight loss thing, right? So I've been plowing or eating about 2,000 calories a day or, or less. And then uh, what my body's been doing is burning up a lot of the fat reserves. Well, a little bit. And lo and behold, what's in those fat reserves is a lot of THC. So man, the one day where I fucking didn't eat anything, I think I ate a bologna sandwich for the whole day, I started getting wrecked because my fucking fat was burning and all of a sudden I was getting a buzz again. <laughs> I was like, I was kind of cheating, but I guess that's not really cheating, right? It's, it's not like I actually took drugs intentionally. <laughs> all right, there's a whole bunch of people here already collecting the kegs, so I'll just drop by and say hi to them. Say cheers, hope they get lots of kegs. Bastards. No, I'm just <laughs> no, I'm starting to wear off from the ability of not needing naps. So I was thinking of actually having a nap today. So one thing when you quit cannabis for the first few days, you're fucking wide awake the whole time. Hey everybody. Maybe I can still get one keg even though these guys are picking them. Oh, I fucking put it in the wrong chat. I hate when I do that. Then they're like, oh, do not repeat the same message. Well, I fucking put it in the wrong chat. <laughs> hey, it's Kingu. And Ed. Hey guys. <laughs> now if anyone happens to actually have the ability to do voice chat in some way and you see me in the game, mention it that you want to call into the show, it'd be great. I'm not going to make fun of anyone or anything, I'm always super polite to guests. That was the one issue I had when I did podcasting, is I had all these plans to like have like argumentative conversations with the guests to make it entertaining to listen to. And that was fucking the worst. Every time I'd always chicken out and like start agreeing with everything they say. It's like I gotta stop doing that when it comes to podcasting. Because as nice as the guest appreciates that, like not have, being like confrontational or having an easy show to do, when you get that fucking excitement of like the arguments, that's when the fucking viewers like it the best. So yeah, that's what I'm trying to think about reconsidering that. I won't like freak out and swear at you guys or anything, obviously. But I'll try not to. <laughs> I should talk a little bit more. See, how's the kegs going? Whoops, put an extra H at the end. Now, if anyone's wondering, I think I have like some of the worst spelling imaginable. <laughs> that was the worst when I was doing podcasting. Sometimes I would release the cover of the show, share it with my guests, and be like, oh, you can share it with all your friends or your friends and your pages and your colleagues. And then I would relook at the title and I've fucking spelled the wrong or something. I'm like, God sakes, it's like <laughs> It's like I gotta pay more attention to my spelling. Jeez. Grammar I'm bad at too. For the longest time, I kept getting there mixed up. Because I think the only time I ever got taught the difference of there was in like grade four or something. So I was like, geez, it was hard to remember all the way back to grade four and what version of there you're supposed to use for everything. All right, what did he say? How's the keg flow? Just arrived myself, but it was decent. First day. Yeah, same. Yeah, same. I gotta fly to next island. Alright, well, let's get going out of here. I'll wave and say bye. Alright, see you guys. Cheers. Alright, I'll hit T so I can teleport back. 
Excuse me, instead of wasting all my oil. Alright, I guess I better close this, make sure I don't have any other thing open that's using my system resources. I'll check and see if I got any other updates from Entropians. I think I covered all the comments on Facebook and the videos. Oh yeah, that was the only other thing I noticed yesterday. Remember how I linked that video where the girl was allowed to share her opinion of what happened to her when she had COVID? It's already been removed. So I don't know if it was YouTube that removed it or her that removed it. From what I knew, I was really wondering because like any time that I would say anything to do with the, the virus or anything, they gave you that warning from Facebook, like the, the official Facebook or not Facebook, YouTube warning. And they said you were literally not allowed to mention even the name of the virus, let alone say one thing or the other about your opinion on it, or they would take your channel down and demonetize it or one or the other. I was like, holy shit, that's some pretty fucking strict rules, right? Like right off the bat, when I got that message from YouTube, that's when the fucking red flag lights went on. I was like, holy fuck, they're hiding something because they don't want anyone to talk about it. It's like, you don't really fucking prevent people from talking about something if you're not trying to hide something, right? Because normally if you're not hiding anything, you're like, go ahead, look into it all you want, talk about it all you want, we're not hiding anything. So I'm not saying that the government or anything's hiding everything, but it's obviously they're hiding something. Or maybe they just did it for good intentions. Like, you know, good intentions paved the road to hell, and some people don't seem to realize that. Yeah, so sorry about that link being dead. I know probably everyone's already sick of the virus anyway, so they don't really care what people's symptoms were and stuff, but I was just curious to see, like, what was the process? Like, what symptom did you get first? What was the last symptoms? How long did each symptom last? So that if I do get sick, I could compare it to it and be like, hey, it was similar to what this was. Oh, there's some oil. Will I get it? Woohoo! Yeah, so I think in general, like a lot of the Rock Tropian players are really nice. Especially like Raven Jade, Doc, there's so many cool ones, but uh, but the thing is, is that socialism, like say we're trying to compete for kegs or these barrels or oil or anything, it could easily boil down into an argument, right? Like someone runs and grabs it just before you get it and then you yell at them, you're like, hey man, that was mine. So that's where you start getting these <coughs> conflicts on Rocktropia that you wouldn't see on other planets. Because the other planets don't even have any free stuff to compete over. So obviously you're going to have less conflict. Oh, there's another guy picking up oil there, so I'll get ready to head out. I'll leave him some oil. I don't want to be taking all the items all the time. As I look for more. <laughs> yeah, I got to get that King of Contradiction shirt out. I think that would be a good shirt too. Now the episodes are a little bit late because I've been getting back into the ancient mystery stuff. One of my favorite uh, Eastern Star Freemason, she posted a really good video yesterday. I got a chance to work with her on some stuff years ago, but she's since moved to England and, well, I don't know if she's officially moved there, she just has a boyfriend there now. So yeah, that's, uh, I haven't really hung out with her too much since then. We almost got a chance to go to the museum in Toronto together, but I was kind of glad that we never did because at the point when she asked me to go to the museum with her or when she was in town, it was at the point where I was like at my low point in my life where I was like fucking obese, smoking, raging alcoholic. So I was like, that was probably not the greatest time to go hang out with her. <laughs> Especially I didn't even know as much about ancient mysteries as I do this year. so. No, the past few years I've been having some decent breakthroughs about research. It's Some of it's actually a little bit scary how much I've came across and others is not so bad. Now if people are wondering what kind of ancient mystery stuff me and JJ are working on, it's like the secrets to immortality and that sort of stuff, so it can be a little bit terrifying sometimes. 
Now I'm pretty sure with the Freemasons, like when they were asking me to come into the lodge and, and talk with them about my work, they have this strict policy where you're not allowed to tell other people about stuff. And I was like, well, that's probably not going to be the greatest plan for me because I always talk about everything. So it's like, I'm not going to be the good person for keeping secrets. So I was like, sorry guys, I have to decline the invitation there. Now I think the main reason I got the invitation wasn't really because of my fucking work or research, even though a lot of them said it was good, was uh, the whole light being situation. I don't know if I've ever told you guys about my paranormal experiences that got me into that sort of stuff. I actually had an encounter with light beings when I was a teenager, well not a teenager, I think what was I around 10? So just before I turned a teenager. And it wasn't like, oh, I was sleeping alone in my bed or something. It was actually an encounter with them outside with other people. So it was kind of fucked. And then when I was getting into researching light beings to try to solve what it was that I saw, then I came across the Amesha Spenta. And it's like the ancient Iranian angels. They're like these light beings from like the Anunnaki and stuff. And they're apparently, what is it, the divine sparks that the creator sends down to the earth to make sure that his plan continues to go according to plan. So then I started to learn more about them. And then I was like, holy shit, who was it that wrote about all this? And it turned out to be Master Freemason Albert Pike and some of his most secret books. And I didn't even come across the books until I was already typing in Amesh Spenta because I found out it from my own research. And then I found out after that it was Albert Pike who was one of the researchers um, world's leading experts on the research of it which I found very weird because like here I am like a modern guy with the internet access to all these archives and libraries around the world and that's how I found out about it and I was like how the fuck did Albert Pike find out about it he lived in like the 1800s so it's like he didn't have access to all this shit why am I at Camp Crunk sweating it's like God, it's like <laughs> subconsciously, eh? I've sweated so much, I just automatically run somewhere and start sweating without even noticing what I'm doing. <laughs> it's like when there's boobs around, I just look, I can't help it. <laughs> now, sorry if I stare at anyone's boobs, I try not to. Now the only time I ever actually did break my addiction to looking at boobs is when some when I was doing the leftism activism stuff. I used to help film protests and stuff. And I was like, well, I'm not gonna help film a topless protest, but they said that some of the girls wanted like a big guy there to help back them up if anyone started shit. So I was like, all right, I'll go. And I was actually getting a bit of social anxiety about not wearing a shirt myself because I've been overweight for a good chunk of my life. So I was like, hey, maybe I can use this as an opportunity to try going around topless in public and all the people will be staring at the fucking women and not me and my fucking rolls of fat. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I managed to do. Then after that protest, I was like, man, I didn't feel the addiction for boobs for at least a couple days. <laughs> Uh, get my mind out of the gutter. Jeez. <laughs> That's one thing I've tried. Like, people will say, oh, you're giving leftism and activism such a bad name and you've never even tried it. It's like, no, I actually did try it for quite a few years. Check my YouTube archive. You can see I filmed protests, did interviews, everything. Not a lot of them. I think just two or three, but some of them are pretty good. And I used to miss the old activism days because it was a lot about the environment and stuff, right? I didn't mind those protests. I don't think I could handle the violence in the protests these days, though. So it'd be a little bit beyond my fucking comprehension or ability to cope. Mm. Yeah, yeah, let's go pop some shit in storage and we'll get ready to make this journey. Yeah. All right, let's see what we got here. Is this shrapnel? Oh, it's hardly anything. I was like, maybe I could trade terminal and make something. Fuck, I wanted to get this up to 10k sweat, put it for sale in my shop before I left. 
and I only made it to 7k because I haven't had much time for sweating lately. Oh yeah, that was the other comment. I posted a, I checked the other comments and another guy said that he freaking hates sweating. And I was like, man, it's like how many people keep saying they hate sweating but they play the game alone? It's like, yeah, you should maybe check it out a little bit. I think what it is, is like some people like, you know how you look down at someone who's on welfare, you're like, hey, it's like someone's on welfare, they're not very good. <laughs> oh, he messaged. <laughs> yeah, well, I won't say wrong chat, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, what's new? Hey, well, I was gonna ask him, was it you that got the. Hey, did you get it global yesterday? Fuck, spelled global wrong. You idiot! <laughs> no, I didn't really. Well, I put the letters in the wrong order. <laughs> yeah, don't worry if I'm talking to you about globals. I'm not like jealous of them or anything. I got over my global jealousy about 10 years ago. <laughs> I can accept the fact that the globals just aren't coming. <laughs> as much as I wish it was the other way, but hey. Alright, well, let's try taking off from, let's say, Camp Crunk. Maybe we'll do that. Before I take off from Camp Crunk, I'll just maybe check if anyone's doing the AI still. Maybe they completed their mission and they left, and then I can just clean up the rest of the AI they left. Just in case I see an AI, I'll get my gun ready. Come on. I hate it when my mouse stops working. Now the mouse that I use for the show is I got a, a wireless silent click mouse. That's why I got the silent click mouse is because I realized a lot of shows I was recording, I could always hear the mouse clicking. I'm like, fuck, that's annoying. I think the clicking has gotten louder if I really pound on it, but at least small clicks, they're still quiet. Or just normal strength clicks. <sighs> yeah, so I think after I finish recording the episode today, Oh, there's some AI. I don't see anyone around. I gotta make sure I don't drown them. Right, technically I don't see anyone else around. And I already asked if I was taking any mobs from anyone. And I didn't hear any response back, or if I did, I missed it. How many AI? I got six. Holy shit, I'm doing the AI slow lately. I remember some days I would finish the AI mission at least once a day. That was good. Because that was really helping my ped flow increase. Because man, when you do this trick without fucking shooting any other creatures but AI, you fucking profit. And I mean big time. If anyone hasn't seen the episodes, go back. Well, it's not like huge, like thousands of ped or anything, but you're definitely not going to be losing money. Now the first time I completed the AI mission, I was almost in shock. I was like, oh my god, the profit's amazing compared to every other mission in the game I've played. And that you can repeat it over and over. I was like, holy shit. Well, yeah, that was one of the questions I got in the YouTube. One of the viewers is asking what missions I recommend on Rocktropia. 
It's definitely the AI one. And there's actually technically two AI missions that I don't get. Maybe someone could fill me in if they understand this. There's this AI mission, and then there's also a second AI mission called the Great AI War. But look, every time I kill AI for the Great AI War whatever, it never adds to the total. It always says zero. So I don't get, what am I doing wrong? It says, the Great AI War is your opportunity to become a candidate for land ownership on Rocktropia. So I guess when you complete this mission, you can win land area? I don't get what's going on with that, but... So I was a little bit confused. How come when I kill the AI that my total is not going up? Maybe it's because I have to kill the other mobs too, but... That doesn't make sense because it says kill the AI, so should be tracking how many AI I kill. So maybe that's a mission bug. Maybe someone would probably respond that and say, oh yeah, that's a mission that's not complete yet. Seems weird though, because the AI mission's been going for years, so. Yeah, I wish I started the AI mission sooner. I think I just found out about it, was it last year? When I first made that AI mission way back in my show archive. Even before I had like an official show, I was just like trying out to see if I could do a show. Oh, there's another. So if people are wondering about the mission on Rocktropia, yeah, I definitely recommend this one. And if you're too impatient and you're going to shoot these zombies, it's a waste of time. Because then by the time you shoot the zombie, you'll have used so much ammo that you'll lose money doing the mission. It's just to warn you. I think the other way you can get it is by killing those vixens. And that wouldn't be so bad because at least they're somewhat easier to kill without going broke. But I'm pretty sure you would still lose money overall. Alright, so we're at the 10 minute mark and I figure how, what I'll do to wrap up the show. Did I do the message from the sponsor already? Now I hate it when I record two episodes in the same like hour or two. Because then I'm like, shit, I can't remember. I'm getting it mixed up of stuff I've already done. So we'll just do it quick. Finish it quick just in case I did it twice. Today's Riverside t-shirt episode was brought to you by... Crack! Crack! It'll fuck you up. Woo! Now I'm trying to play in trophy at the same time I do that. See, I'm bad for doing two things at the same time, always. It's like making out with a chick, I'll always be thinking of disc golf. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's like practice my throw, my putting. <laughs> Put it in, put it in. <laughs> oh man, I need to get out more. <laughs> Alright, let's swing by Juicy Fruit Shop and see what new inventory she's got. I haven't seen her in the game in, I think, almost like a year. I gotta hope she's okay. Maybe she's just at another planet or something. I used to run into her around my shop all the time. But we can check if her shop is fully stocked and that should mean she's perfectly okay. Yeah, it looks fully stocked. Well, except for the two. And I think I bought, what was it, two items from her, remember? She's got Listeria and Power Container Blueprint. That's one of the ones that I globaled or I think it was a 50 petter when I was on, uh, on Arcadia. So if anyone's looking for a print that globals, that's actually one I can personally recommend because I actually globaled using it. And that's pretty rare for me. Look at all these pets, eh? I should see if she's got anything cheap that I could resell at my shop, help her out. The Penelion's only one pet. I don't know if anyone would rebuy that. The green leprechaun is one pet? You gotta be kidding. I thought this guy was expensive. 
Alright, I'll buy one of him off of her. Alright, thanks Juicy Fruit. I appreciate you putting really good prices on shit. Oh, the blonde android she's got too. Man, I love these android pets. Really hot. Should I buy it? Yeah, 10 pet. Let's do it. Alright, thanks Juicy Fruit. You got some really good shop items here. Appreciate it. Now, me and Juicy Fruit were actually like that other guy. Or our, our, our initial way we met, we started yelling at each other and arguing. <laughs> but I think over time, we managed to work things out. Now, what their fight was, I don't know if I've told you guys the story before, is she was like, uh, she had this shop, but she wanted to expand, so she wanted one of the Camp Crunk shops. And then when she heard that I was selling it, she's like, oh, I'll buy it. And then she heard my price, and she's like, you jackass, that's way too high. Or something like that. <laughs> Not to put words in her mouth, it was an insult of some type. Or maybe I just perceived it as an insult because I was in a little bit of a bad mood too. That she didn't want to buy it, even though she was interested in the shop. <laughs> Yeah, so then eventually I was telling her my situation, I think, and why I was charging so much, and then she's like, oh, okay, that's more reasonable. And then uh, eventually we just started talking about stuff we had in common. Next thing you know, we were friends. I hope. <laughs> Not she still hates me. Now that's the one harsh thing you gotta realize when you're selling items and you're being a reseller is you're gonna get people upset because your price is gonna be a little bit higher than the cheap price or maybe a lot higher depending how much you're reselling but yeah so it's gonna happen one way or another and you just gotta accept that fact it's kinda like working out right like you gotta accept there's gonna be a little pain involved when you're lifting those weights if you want the goodness the babes to give you attention. <laughs> now that's the main reason I'm worried about getting or losing my muscles. Now that I'm getting older, it's like shit. I can see my looks declining quicker and quicker every day. It's like God, if I don't have some muscles to back me up, I'm gonna be alone forever. <laughs> Which isn't such a bad thing. I could play disc golf every day. <laughs> my fucking body wouldn't break down. Right, I'm hoping there's an AI over in this corner because this is the few times where I was hunting an AI and I actually got a profit. Like shooting the AI and got a really good loot out of it. Not even just from the mission reward. So every time I see an AI over here, I'm like, yes, maybe it's the next big one. Oh god, this is annoying. Now I'm starting to get a sore throat and I'm like, fuck, is it the virus or just because I've been talking non-stop for three hours? Because <laughs> I know if I talk for three hours, it'll get sore, so I was like, fuck, is it one or the other? <laughs> yeah, I can hardly wait till they have like the cheap at-home COVID test. I'll be doing it like once a week just to find out if I have it or not. Alright, so there's no AI over here, and the show's almost over, so I'm gonna get ready and start flying up to space. I'll check, make sure no AI is chasing me. That's good. Hey, let's see who's hanging out here today. It's Al Alucat? Alucat? Hey. Does anyone else do that when they type something into the chat bar, they, they read it out aloud? <laughs> I don't know why, but it's like I do that every time. <laughs> it's almost like I'm trying to simulate actually talking to them. Alright, I need a drink for this sore throat. Man, oh man. Might even take a haul. Fuck. Got one over there. Now, if anyone's wondering, I am going to social isolate just in case. And I've been usually doing that anyways just because of my uncle. I know my friends are starting to wonder, like, what the hell is going on? You don't show up to disc golf games anymore. 
I don't know, after that big fight I had with my other friend about the virus, I figured, man, until this whole virus situation's over, I should probably fucking try to cool my jets so that I don't fucking get into any more trouble. Alright, well, let's put some shit that's better. These cheap ass, yeah, they'll probably sell. The green cassette and that, I don't want to sell. Or don't not not sell. Yeah, no one's buying the gas cap, so I'll pick that up. And flowers haven't sold in a while, so I'll pick them up. We'll put them back another time. Holy shit, did I have a high price on that? What the fuck? You idiot! <laughs> Alright, him. I think I'll move him over. Because now he's solo. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll put him up to 3 ped. Because I can't remember. I should have checked the price before I picked him up. I don't want to price him for less than I paid. I think I paid two. Can't remember. Does anyone else want to put in the chat? Maybe I should have put two on that because I paid one, but I'm pretty sure I paid two ped or plus two ped. Yeah, and if you're ever wondering why you can't spawn your stuff in your shop, like you have one of these or a different similar shop, what you do is you stand on your shop and then stand back. Then you can spawn it. Smoking babe. See, won't let me summon or place. So I'll go over here. Now I can click it. Boom. Now I'm able to place. See, I think what it's doing is just making sure you're on the right area. Alright, this is cool. Now my shop's looking a little bit more improved, eh? You know, I'm gonna put like... Wow, oh, fuck, I should've... Yeah, I paid 10 for the Android. How much did I pay for this guy? Fuck, I wish I would've kept track. I think it was plus 2. So I'm gonna put plus 7 on this guy, just for the luck of the Irish. See if I can make a little bit of extra. He looks like a cool pet, so maybe he is worth a little bit more. And the Android, just for the fun of it, see if it actually sells. Let's put a really high one, because I kind of want to keep her. She looks really nice. I wish she was in color, though. Maybe if I turn the graphic settings up, then she'd be in color. That's probably what it is. So if anyone wants to help them get some cool pets, the prices might be a little bit high, especially hers, but... I don't know, maybe she's harder to come by and that's not too bad of a price. Let's lower it a bit, that's ridiculous. Just looking at it makes me sick. <laughs> like you jackass. <laughs> right, let's try 40. That's a little bit not ripping people off as bad. There'd only be three times the amount I've paid. Only. <laughs> Alright, just in case I swing past my shop on FOMA, maybe I'll bring the flowers. No, let's put it in storage. Now I was worried I'd have nothing for content today, but big shout out to the Riverside University. It was nice having that for content. I hope they do more stuff like that in the future, and I'll try to help them advertise it. No, no cost. Anyone who's helping out Entropia, I always try to help out them. Because we're all a community, right? So we should try to stick together, work together. Swear I'm not trying to show favoritism to whoever has the biggest boobs. <laughs> Although it does sometimes play a factor. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> hmm. Oh yeah, I can actually sell mankinis now. I keep forgetting that. 
Should I put one on the auction just to see how it sells? Ah, let's do it for the hell of it. I've yet to sell a fucking mankini after selling or after crafting all those. Yeah, that's the one thing that's a bit of a bitch with crafting. Sometimes you're like, oh, I'll try crafting. It's not that hard a profession. Really what it comes down to is the sales. You can sell what you craft, you'll make a profit. If you can't sell your shit, you're gonna it's gonna be a disaster. Alright, let's sell one mankini. Should I put the full TT one? That make it might harder for people to buy. Let's check if there's any even on the auction here. I think Soul was selling some, right? So he might already have them packed. We'll go to clothing and just check. No? Oh, Riona bikini. There's one for sale here. Who's selling it? Let's check. Probably Soul. Oh no, Marcus Mace Valentag. I don't know who that guy is. I don't think I recall his name. Sorry, Marcus, if we have met and I fucked it up. Jeez, I should put a bid on it, eh? Because I could get it for cheap. They're worth a minimum of 14. And right now in the auction, it's 11. Mm. Now, if anyone wants a cheap bikini, check out the auction. Alright, let's put one mankini for sale. See if anyone buys it. If anyone on Rocktropia can buy the mankini I put for sale, I really appreciate it. Big time. Let's see how cheap they are now. Six ped. Oh my god. Who the hell was selling it for six ped? Jeez. Okay, I'll put a 30 buy out. And I'm going to put a 10 minimum bid. Because I don't want to start, or let's put a 14 minimum bid. God, I don't want it to be super cheap. Even if I lose the three auction fee of buck 20. Jeez, expensive auction fee for an item that's like only going to get me 30 ped. That's ridiculous. That's like what? Mm, 3%? No, something like that. Way off on my math there, I think. Fuck, if it's going to be that cheap, man, i got to raise it a little higher. Or, I mean, if the auction fee is that high. So if anyone can help buy a mankini, I got one on the auction right now. 14 or 36. Might be able to get yourself a deal, unless you're trying to get it for fucking under 10. Oh, God, I can't believe they dropped that low in price. Oh, well, live and learn. Should have tried to unload. Well, yeah, I did try to unload them as fast as I could, but I couldn't sell them. That was what happened. All right, let's check my inventory. Did I put everything in storage? Yes, I did. Yes, we can. There we go. You ever notice sometimes when you hit the fuel button to go up, it doesn't, and then you think it's another key? hit other keys and you're like ah oh, fuck it's not that key then you hit the other one it's like oh it was the one I was hitting it just didn't do anything <laughs> now when me and Beamer used to hunt sometimes we would go down that road all the way to the city down there and then around there I think that's where the teleporter is and we got a few globals hunting the guys there that I think they were gangsters level 13 thieves I think it was so if anyone's looking for a place to get a level 13 global I think around there, me and Beamer had some luck. God, I miss Beamer. And he's been gone since May now, eh? What is that, five months? Holy shit. Fuck. Now, I appreciate you guys watching the show and stuff. It's actually helping me get over this whole Beamer situation. So for a while there, I was actually considering quitting the game. Because it was making me depressed every time I logged in. It's kind of like when you get a girlfriend that does something that you really like. Like say if you like video games, you got a girlfriend that really likes video games. Play video games together all the time. And then after you break up, you're like, oh fuck, now every time I play the video games, it makes me depressed. <laughs> so you gotta be careful with that. Wait, 
Alright, which plane is next, Alan? I always forget. There, it's that one. Alright, perfect time. The fucking show is already running long. Alright, hopefully I don't hit any aliens or asteroids while I wrap up the show. <laughs> Alright, thanks everyone who's been helping out with the Patreon already. I really appreciate you guys. Society Six, Swagbucks, Game Kit, Hideout, Bitcoin, and the Virtual Maid Sex Machine for adults and men only. But if ladies need a sex machine and they want to get let down, then they know who to call. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anyways, yeah. Um, the other stuff I got linked below is Entropia Zine, Raven Jade's stuff, and what else was there? Wrap it up quick. If you happen to get one of those leprechaun pets in your vaporizer and he tastes like shit, you give the show a dislike. If it doesn't happen, you can help with the like. I really appreciate it. And don't forget, never purchase the products from my sponsor because it will ruin your life. <laughs> See you later. Here's three things. Bye.